The human rights situation is worsening globally and that is why it's important that we hold all those accountable that violate human rights. Islam is the real problem that we face in the Netherlands, in France, in Belgium, in all of Europe. The independence of the judges in Hungary is one of the best in the European Union. <laughs> we need the tripod of democracy, respect for human rights, respect for the rule of law. Welcome to the Speech Bag Podcast by Liberties, where we look at human rights and democracy issues from across the EU. I'm Jonathan Day. On this episode... Germany has announced major restrictions on anyone who's not vaccinated against COVID-19. Vaccines may become compulsory from February. French President Emmanuel Macron says he wants to piss off unvaccinated people. Austria, meanwhile, is set to become the first EU state to make the jabs mandatory as of February 1st. Unser Körper gehört uns und dabei bleibt's auch. Mandatory vaccine regimes are still being considered by some states and have been considered by many more. Because even though we may finally be getting over the COVID-19 pandemic, we are doing so in the sense that we're learning to manage the virus. Places like France, Austria, Ireland, Germany, and others have considered implementing mandatory vaccines. Some have dropped the idea, but others, like Austria, are pushing ahead. And against this push comes a counter push. Many people are opposed to the vaccines and say that mandatory vaccination regimes violate human rights. The last voice you heard just now was from a Vienna protest against Austria's mandatory vaccine scheme. Our bodies belong to us, he said, and it will stay that way. It's a refrain heard at all such protests. But interestingly, it's not heard often at human rights organizations. To find out why mandatory vaccination schemes are not necessarily in violation of human rights, I'm joined by Dr. Orshi Reich. She's been working on issues related to coronavirus tracing apps and regulations for the Civil Liberties Union for Europe. Orshi, welcome and thank you for joining me. I hope this will be the last interview we have to have about the coronavirus. Let's hope so and (laughs) thank you for having me. Maybe the place to start is actually just to clarify what a mandatory vaccination scheme is. If one believes some of the extreme views out there, there's jail time or forced vaccination for those who don't comply. So what exactly are we talking about here? Well, that is prescribed by the law. uh, And the law says that you're going to need to be vaccinated. Whether there is something like a fine attached to it, it's a different question. Even without the fine, it is mandatory uh, if the law prescribes it for you. But normally, the law also says uh, that, okay, so if you're not going to get vaccinated, the state will do this and this with you. So to be clear, failure to follow a, a mandatory vaccination scheme is a civil matter, not a criminal one. There is no criminal uh, consequences attached to mandatory vaccination schemes that would be against international human rights law. And it's not the case that uh, anyone can just grab you on the street or the police can grab you on the street and uh, administer a vaccination right there uh, or anywhere. Uh, It's simply that there is possibly going to be an administrative fine if you don't meet your obligation to, to get the vaccine. It's basically the same as like seed belt. <laughs> like if you don't comply with the law, then you're going to get fined. Given the nature of the EU, some people may think that it has some authority here. And indeed, many of the human rights that people talk about in this context or, or at these protests are codified into European law as well. What is the EU's role, if any, in national vaccination schemes? So in the European Union, governments give authority. So it's like governments have the authority at first, and then uh, they give the authority for the European Union to take decisions on certain policy areas. But this is not the case uh, with the vaccinations. So in the vaccinations, member states have their own authority. They They didn't give it away. And uh, member states decide whether they want to introduce a mandatory regime or not. 
uh, EU can help and does help the government to coordinate their efforts uh, in fighting the pandemic, but it doesn't mean that the EU can say that, okay, from now on, all EU citizens will need to have a vaccination. But schemes that do say, essentially, all citizens need to have a vaccination, like Austria's, these are not necessarily in violation of human rights. Despite all of the things that protesters say, human rights groups are sort of like, well, not so fast. Why is that? Because human rights can be infringed uh, in order to protect certain legitimate aims. That is, for example, my human right, uh, even to my bodily integrity when it ca- comes to, to, to vaccinations, can be infringed if certain conditions are met. And if it, this is the case that uh, if I don't get this vaccination, I can, I can inflict, uh, for example, bodily harm on others. So that is if there are people who cannot be vaccinated or if it is the case uh, that, uh, for example, the, the, the healthcare system would collapse uh, because of the number of the people who get in there and who need uh, to get treated in a hospital or in the hospitals of the country. Uh, you know what happens if the healthcare system collapses? Uh, there will be people who go there and then cannot get treated. So it happens in many countries that the healthcare system is overwhelmed, certain treatments are not given, and that basically causes years of life uh, for people or even their life uh, that they don't have access to the right treatment because of the pandemic, right? So it can be a legitimate aim according to uh, human rights law to say that yes in order to to protect public health uh, we will prescribe a mandatory vaccination regimes it's not the case that this is the only thing uh, that the government needs to have so like a legitimate aim is a first uh, first step or first precondition uh, if you if you must uh, but uh, there needs to be other conditions met So first of all, uh, besides that the mandatory regime needs to have a legitimate aim, it also needs to be appropriate, uh, an appropriate means uh, to achieve that aim. It also needs to be necessary to achieve that aim. And uh, fourth, uh, it needs to be proportionate to that aim. What do these things actually mean in practice? How do we, for example, determine if something is proportionate or not? So... What does appropriateness mean in this case? Uh, ap- uh, vaccine is appropriate, the vac- mandatory vaccination is appropriate if the vaccines are basically effective and safe. So if we don't have an effective vaccine that can actually help us to achieve the legitimate aim we have, for example, avoiding the collapse of the healthcare system. So if the, if, if, if the vaccines are not such that they could help us in that, then this is not an appropriate means to achieve the aim. The vaccines are also need to be safe uh, in order to be appropriate. So a vaccine that could kill you, like, uh, I don't know, that could kill uh, one person out of 10 would not be a safe vaccine. And it would not be the, like a, a, vend- a mandatory vaccination regime in that case wouldn't be an appropriate means to achieve the leg- legitimate aim, even though it could achieve that. So that's about appropriateness. Uh, what does necessary means in this case? So necessary means that we don't basically don't have any better solution. Uh, that is, uh, that means that we don't have a solution that's less light infringing, uh, and at the same time could achieve the same aim. So, for example, if you would need to. Uh, drink a glass of water and then jump three times uh, and it would have the same um, effect in a vaccine and then you would just need to ask the population to do that and uh, that would help us to to uh, to avoid the collapse of the health system then it would be right it would be perfect right so that that would mean that actually even though the mandatory vaccination regime could help us uh, to, uh, to avoid the collapse of the health system, we have another means 
a much less right infringing means. Thus, the mandatory vaccination regime is not necessary to achieve the aim. And what does proportionate mean? Well, so for example, there are like other uh, communicable diseases like common cold. And to my understanding, there is no vaccination against common cold, but common cold doesn't cause any really terrible things in society. Like it's it's unpleasant for most people, uh, but it's not that avoiding that unpleasantness would justify to get the whole population vaccinated against common cold. What about mandatory vaccination schemes that only target certain people or groups within the population? For example, schemes that mandate vaccines for health workers are understandable, seemingly legitimate. But what if a mandatory vaccination scheme were to target people based on age or other criteria that are prone to discrimination? Would that add any issues or complications to this? Mm, No, basically there are no other issues there. So yes, some people believe that it's kind of unjust or unfair to impose an obligation on older people or only on uh, on the people who are in certain professions, like, I don't know, teachers in some case, or people working for uh, care institutions. But it's actually less right infringing than introducing a general vaccination, mandatory vaccination scheme for the whole population. Just to see why I think it's, it's, it's helpful to imagine Again, this is not a real disease, but just imagine a disease that can only uh, attack men, right? So for some genetic reasons, it, has not, it, it does nothing uh, to women. Women just don't contract it, uh, but men do, and it's a very serious disease. So in that case, would it be justified to say that, yeah, okay, so, but we want to be fair, um, so let's, Let's vaccinate the whole population, women too, because uh, yeah, yeah, it's not nice to 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 uh, vaccinate only men. You would say, nah, come on, why would you do that, right? Because it's just not necessary to to vaccinate women uh, to achieve the legitimate aim of of avoiding the collapse of the of the healthcare system in this in this imagined scenario, right? It's, it's, it has no justification. You feel that, yeah, it's not nice that only men get the, get the vaccination, but it is necessary for, for protect the whole country and it's only them who are affected by the disease. Okay, with the pandemic we have now, it's not this clear cut, but when governments can reasonably argue that basically the people who get into the healthcare system and may overhang the, 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 the healthcare system are those who are above a certain age. And if we can vaccinate them, then we can avoid the collapse of the healthcare system, then it is justified. The same with doctors and people with uh, working for healthcare institutions. So if, if you can point out and argue uh, properly, why it is the case that uh, certain professions need to be vaccinated and that would really help us to stop the disease, uh, then it can be justified. Of course, there are like uh, uh, unreasonable ways of, or like unjustified ways of uh, uh, vaccinating only a part of the population. So just imagine that the government says that, yeah, so the thing is that uh, we need to have, I don't know, 80% of the population vaccinated. And then we see that there is this ethnic group in the society we don't really like and the majority doesn't really like. So how about just prescribing vaccination to them? And then we will reach by that the 80% because like the majority of the majority population already got vaccinated out of their free will. So we force the members of the ethnic group and then it's going to be all all right. No, that wouldn't be, wouldn't be justified. But when you have a good reason uh, to prescribe vaccination for a certain age group, 
it's different. Given that this is not the clear-cut human rights violation that many people think it to be, what is the role of a human rights organization in an environment where there is a mandatory vaccination scheme? Human rights experts are not healthcare experts, they're not epidemiologists, they're not experts in communicable diseases, but surely they should still have a role in ensuring that human rights do not in future become violated by such a scheme, and to ensure that the scheme in place, in fact, does meet all of the criteria you previously mentioned. I don't know whether this is going to be the popular answer here, but I do believe that human rights organizations on their own cannot really do much. So if they have the resources um, to consult experts or if they are a human rights organization uh, who somehow include um, epidemiologists or, or, or other experts that are working on communicable disease, then they may have that they may have a good way or, 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 or they may know uh, whether a certain specific regime is justified or not. But as someone who is educated in human rights, whether you can say that the regime was really necessary or whether it is appropriate without knowing uh, what the experts say, uh, the experts in, in, in the empirics, uh, that's just not possible. I'm just curious about your thoughts as, as a human rights advocate, but also just as a private citizen about, for example, Emmanuel Macron saying that he wants to make life miserable for the, for the unvaccinated, that he wants to, quote, piss them off. Um, wh- what, is your, what is your opinion of these sorts of pressure schemes applied by our elected officials. Pissing off the unvaccinated out of spite certainly doesn't qualify as a legitimate interest of the law. And I certainly hope that the law doesn't say that, okay, so we want to piss off the unvaccinated people, but the law, quite possibly, I haven't read it, though, has some uh, legitimate interest. I'm as not not as a human rights expert, but as a European citizen, find this saying very distasteful, and uh, not only distasteful but also very dangerous. I think by this point, the society is extremely polarized around the issue of vaccinations or mandatory restrictions we have. And we don't need anyone, especially not a European leader, to 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 make this make the society more polarized and make public debate basically less possible. We need to have a shared understanding of who we are and uh, that we belong to the same community. And this doesn't happen. That it certainly seems distasteful, and, and that might actually be diplomatic a bit. Or she finally, I'm just curious about what you see ahead of us. It does seem like we will get through this pandemic without a lot of mandatory vaccination schemes coming in into place. I think it is actually the case. It seems that uh, that many countries wanted to introduce them and then it's getting shoved uh, mm-hmm. in light of the newest uh, research or in light of what experts say. Uh, but again, as a human rights organization or like as a human rights worker, I cannot say whether this is the right thing to do or whether introducing uh, actually a mandatory vaccination scheme to the whole population or to a segment of the population would be justified or not, because for that I would need much more medical expertise and public mm-hmm. health expertise and epidemiological expertise, which I don't have. <laughs> Orshi, thank you for being here today. It was a pleasure to speak with you. That's it for this episode of the Speech Bag Podcast by Liberties. If you have any questions or comments, please send them along to podcast at liberties.eu. And to find out more, visit our website at www.liberties.eu. This has been a presentation of the Civil Liberties Union for Europe.